Hi, and welcome to Engineer's Mindset. Now, we have a question which says, two cables are linked at C as shown and loaded as shown. Question says, determine the magnitude of the tensions in cable C, A, and C, B. So we have these um, um, cables linked at what? Um, a and B from C, carrying a load, supporting a load of 50 kg. Now, we are going to draw the free body diagram and see how it works. So free body diagram, as usual. So we'll draw our graph. Okay, which happens with this. So these are X components. These are positive Y components. From the origin of the graph, these are point C. You see a cable which points to from C to point B and it's tied at point B. So okay, tension force as well as upward force to the points they are tied. Okay, so from the origin, we we'll have a cable that points to point B. So that from this origin, we we'll have a cable that moves to point B. Okay, so the tension is upward because it's tied at point B. So this tension is tension in cable C B making an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal so we have this angle here 30 degrees also from point c we have a tension force a cable that points to point a that moves from a c to point a so the tension is also towards the direction of what where it is tied that's at point a so it's an outward force so from point c we have a cable to point a so this tension is c a and now a closer look at the diagram notice that we are given a height for this cable the height is six meters and we're giving a base for here to be what eight meters so that means we can find this angle here okay so let's obtain this angle using trigonometric identities okay so if we do that um let's draw what we we'll have we we'll have this height okay we we'll have this this will have in that position here is six here is eight so we want to find the angle at this point angle at point c okay let's call this angle theta okay so we can ask usually apply so that um, um trigonometric identity as tan theta is equal to opposite all over adjacent so tan theta is opposite is six all over adjacent is eight all right so we can simply say that theta is equal to arctan of six over eight 0 0.75 say theta is equal to arctan 0 0.75 and that's approximately 37 degrees so it means that the angle at this point is 37 degrees okay so we're going to use this to solve then then again notice that there's a weight acting vertically downwards and we are given that g take g as 9.81 there's a mass that's attached here and this mass will act, have a weight acting what vertically downwards from point c so from point c being the origin we have a weight acting downwards and that which is simply mass times gravity the weight is simply mass times gravity and the mass there is 50 kg 50 ground 50 kg times gravity is 9.81 so it means that this weight is simply what 50 times 9.81 so that weight is 490.5 490.5 newton so we we'll have a weight 490.5 acting vertically down so on this point we we'll have a weight 490.5 Newton, so W is equal to that's the width that we have. So let's present this on the more clear diagram and see. Okay, so we we'll have this. This angle has been established as 37 degrees. Then we we'll have a width acting here. The width is 490.5 Newton. So the question says we should find the tensions in the cables. So the first thing you do, normal um, X component force. S component force okay now let's take the summation at once let's take the summation at once so summation f of x let's take the summation at once okay so hold the tip of the arrow for the cable pull it to meet the x line notice that this cable is pointing outward so if it comes here it still points towards your right so it's positive and it passes through this angle 30 degrees so it becomes the product of the force times what the angle cosine of the angle so we have cable tension T, CB times cos 30. Also resolve this to the X, these are negative X. If you hold the arrow and pull it, notice that it points towards the left. So that means this tension is a negative tension. And again, it passes through this angle, 37 degrees. So you're going to be tension times cosine of that angle. So minus, minus because it's pointing towards the left, tension CA cos 37 so you have this so let's obtain the value of cos 30 and cos 37 summation f of x 
is now equal to cos 30 is 0 0.8660 TCB minus cos 37 that's 0 0.7986 TC so let's call this let's keep this call this equation 1 or let's keep it aside okay so we'll go to vertical component of force so we are taking the summation at once like we did in the first case so summation of y component force so we are taking the summation at once summation f of y so we'll do everything together okay so let's try it and see we want to resolve this force to the vertical if here is 30 automatically here is 60 angle of the quadrant is 90 if here is 37 automatically here is um, 53 53 degrees angle on the quadrant is 90. So if I pull this force to meet the vertical line, notice the direction, it will point upwards and, and then again, it passes through what this angle, 60 degrees. So it's going to be the product of the force, tension force times for the cosine of the angle. <coughs> and it's positive. Okay, so we have TCB cos 60. Okay, that's for TCB. Also, for TCA, hold the tip of the arrow, pull it till it meets the vertical line. You can notice that it passes through this angle, 53 degrees. And again, check the arrow direction, it points upwards, so it's positive. So if we do that, we have plus TCA cos. Plus TCA cos 53. Also notice that we have, we have a force pointing directly downwards. A vertical force pointing directly downwards and that vertical force happens to be the width is already on the y direction it doesn't have any component in the x-axis that's why we do not include it in the summation of horizontal components so we have a force pointing vertically downwards which is the width due to the width of this mass and that force happens to be what 490.5 newton so and it's pointing vertically downwards so it's minus so we include that minus 490.5 so this is our summation of vertical force. So summation of vertical force becomes cos 60 is 0 0.5. So this is 0 0.5 TCB plus cos 53 is 0.6018. So 0.6018 TCA minus 490.5. So we'll keep this aside. Now there's what we call static equilibrium law. static equilibrium law the law states that the summation of all the force in the x-axis and the summation of all the force in the y-axis and the summation of all the force in the z if there's a z is equal to zero that's static equilibrium law so this simply implies that summation f of x is equal to zero and summation f of y is equal to zero so what we'll now do We'll now move to summation f of x what we'll obtain and equate it to zero this will obtain for summation f of x we we'll equate this component to zero okay similarly for summation f of y equate it to zero so this will have okay so we'll have that equate summation f of x to zero so you call this equation one also equate summation f of y to zero this summation f of y so we equate it to zero 0 0.5 0 0.5 tcb plus 0 0.6018 TCA minus 490.5 equal to 0. So call this equation 2. So you have this. Okay, so um, you can say, you can start from, um, say, let's send this one from equation 2 over to this side. Okay, so from equation 2, we can send minus 490.5 over to the sub equation. So we have 0 0.5 TCB plus 0 0.6018 TCA to now be equal to. If minus comes out, becomes positive. So we have 490.5. So call this equation 3. So let's make from equation 1. From 1, let's apply um, substitution. Okay. Um, from 1, uh, let's make any of them subject of the formula. Let us send this minus um, 0 
0.8686 over to the solve equation. So we'll have that 0.8660TCB minus 0 0.79860CA. We said it's equal to zero, so we can send this one over to the solve equation. So we have this now implies 0 0.8660 TCB is now equal to this becomes if this minus crosses over it becomes positive. So we have 0 0.7986 TCA. Okay, so from here we can divide both sides. Divide by Okay, divide both sides by let's say 0 0.8660. Okay, so we have 0 0.8660 TCB into 0 0.8660. That's equal to 0 0.7986 0 0.7986 TCA divided by 0. 8660 so 0 0.860 cancels this out so we have a function for a value for tcb and that value is equal to this divided by t so let's okay so this division gives us 0 0.92 tca so call this equation for so we've been able to obtain a value for tcb in terms of tca so we can now substitute so substitute tcb uh, which is 0 0.92 tca into equation 3 so we substitute that into this equation 3 so in place of tcb we simply put 0 0.92 tca so from equation 3 we have from 3 let's say uh, at line what we have 0 0.5 tcb okay plus 0 0.6018 tca equal to 490.5 this we will have from equation 3 so in place of tcb we simply put 0 0.92 uh, okay so this becomes 0 0.5 in place of tcb we have 0 0.92 tca okay close bracket plus 0 0.6018 tca equal to 490.5 okay so let's expand this and see what we have we have 0 0.46 TCA okay plus 0.6018 TCA equal to 490.5 okay so we can now add these two so on addition of these two 0.46 TCA plus 0.6018 to have we obtain 1.06 TCA to be equal to 490.5 okay so from here we cannot we can now divide by 1.06 so we now divide 1.06 okay so that implies that um get okay, 1.06 tca divides 1.06 that's equal to 490.5 1.06 so this cancels this it now implies that the tension in cable c is equal to 214.91.5 that's the tension in cable C A. Okay. Of course, if you obtain tension in cable C A, you can now substitute into equation three to obtain a value of table C tension in table C B. So substitute into equation three. Sorry, equation four. Okay, equation four. Alright, so we know that from four, from equation four, we obtain that. TCB is 0 0.92 TCA. TCB equals 0 0.92 TCA. So that simply implies that TCB equal to 0 0.92 by TCA is 461.95. Okay. So by 461.95. So that simply implies that TCB equals that gives us approximately 4. Two five newton. So those are two values of tension in cable C A and C B. Thank you very much for that question. Um, please send your questions in the comment section. Like the video if you find it interesting. Share to your friends. 
for more subscribers thank you very much i'll see you in the next video